Hi everyone. In the previous videos, we discussed in detail the concept of shallow network and how forward and backward propagation work. We update weights during the backward propagation step and in the process of performing backward propagation, we observe there are two key components involved. The two key components are loss function and optimizers. Whenever we are solving a regression problem, we consider the loss function as mean squared error and whenever we are solving a classification problem, we consider cross entropy loss function. As far as optimizers are concerned, we are going to discuss in detail the different types of optimizers which are available in PyTorch in the subsequent classes or in the subsequent videos and mathematically understand the workings of each of them. In this video, we will discuss in detail the working of an optimizer which is called as Adagrad optimizer. So this is the snippet of Adagrad algorithm along with its parameters which is taken from the PyTorch documentation and I will provide the link to the documentation in the description itself and let's try to understand different parameters which are available in this Adagrad class and try to correlate it with a small mathematical example. So first of all, Adagrad blatantly stands for Adaptive Gradient and we should know why it is called Adaptive Gradient in the first place. It's because the uh, algorithm automatically adjusts the learning rate in presence of uneven gradients. So we have a parameter called as Gamma which is used for learning rate. And how exactly the learning rate is working, um, we will explain it with the help of a small example as well. So just consider as of now that we have a learning rate and it needs to be adjusted at every iteration. So the adjustment happens over here. This is the learning rate adjustment step and it is happening with respect to a learning rate DK which is happening at each and every iteration. And whenever we proceed forward with the updation of the parameters, like we have a function f, uh, continuous function f, for which the first differential exists, that grad of f exists, um, we need to find the optimal value of theta, which minimizes this function. So we proceed it in a way that we start with an initial value of theta, and over the period of time keep updating the values of theta so that we reach the optimal state. So at each state or at each iteration what we do we update the learning rate and this is an iterative process. So why do we need an optimizer in the first place? When, whenever we are doing a forward and backward propagation we have a loss function we need to minimize. If we are able to get the minimum value of the loss function then that will be the ideal scenario for any neural network to work on. That will mean that we have found the uh, set of parameters or the set of weights which is giving the minimum value for the given loss function. For example, if we are considering a cross entropy, the minimum value it can obtain is zero. So we found out a set of parameters which resulted in a zero cross entropy or a squared error loss function if we are considering we found a set of parameters which gave it a zero value like the squared error is zero which is a very unlikely event to happen when we talk about real world scenario and in most of the cases the usual way of solving a gradient and finding a minima to a loss function is not applicable. So we use uh, numerical optimization methods to obtain a near optimal value. So we may say that we tried our level best but we are not able to reduce the mean squared error below a certain value which could be the least mean squared error possible. So that's what our aim is to reduce the loss as much as possible. We can't uh, tend the loss to zero. We need to reduce it, reduce it as much as possible. So just consider these thetas to be the weights of the forward and backward propagation and using a learning rate which keeps on adjusting itself with each iteration, we keep on updating the theta or the weights at each step. Now this entire algorithm will be a bit clear when I will be explaining it with a small numerical example and we will try to understand the same numerical example with code as well. But as of now, one has to bear in mind that 
the adaptive gradient descent takes into account a learning rate which gets adjusted at each step with respect to uneven gradients and theoretically whenever we are talking about uneven gradients this algorithm must work perfectly fine when we are dealing with a sparse data set because that's where uneven gradients will happen and when we talk about uneven gradients in layman terms it will mean that there are some features in the data which will give you more importance as compared to other features or in other words there are features in the data which are giving you more grade informative gradients to update the weights as compared to other features so we have to put preference on those features only and not prefer any other random noise in the data in that case adagrad works perfectly fine so now we will move ahead and try to solve a very small example numerically with pen and paper using this adagrad algorithm and following the same algorithm which is written over here and we will perform up to two or three iterations and then we will try to see whether we are able to solve it using pytorch or not so we consider a quadratic polynomial over here fx and the objective is to minimize the value of f for a uh, x so in other words we need to find the root of the polynomial now if you have studied a bit of quadratic uh, formula then you will be able to find the two roots of the equation quite easily both of them are definitely not going to be rational uh, those are going to be pretty rational but that's not the uh, task as of now we will be using the adagrad algorithm and try to understand how exactly this could be implemented so that we are able to understand the implementation behind it in a better way so this is the algorithm from the pytorch documentation as i have explained previously let's try to understand what all input parameters we need we need a learning rate as explained over here we consider a learning rate over here which is 0.01 we consider theta not as parameters which is the initializer which is x not for us and we definitely have an objective f which is defined over here we have a weight decay and this weight decay is uh, present over here this weight decay is used to decay the weights at each iteration or decay the gradients at each iteration and on the top of it we definitely have a learning rate decay which will reduce or adjust the learning rate at each iteration so for that purpose we need a learning rate decay and that's why we need an adagrad algorithm because it adjusts the learning rate at each step apart from that we need to initialize the state sum to be zero we did that and also an epsilon needs to be present um, from the calculation we consider a small value of epsilon as well now with all the initializers present we are at time t is equal to zero we have the value of x naught as three and we will proceed forward uh, to see what happens at time t is equal to one so if we follow the algorithm this is what we are supposed to do at time step one we are supposed to calculate the gradients so we calculate the gradient of fx which comes out to be 2x plus 5 we calculate the gradient value at time t is equal to 0 which is coming out to be like this this is the value of gradient at time 0 and then we consider g1 as gradient of f at time t minus 1 which is 11 this is g1 now we adjust the learning rate so we have a gamma which was 0.01 we have made a list of initialization previously as well from here and uh, we adjust it and on the on adjusting uh, we get uh, gamma is 0.01 this will stay as it is so we are using this formula gamma upon 1 plus uh, t minus 1 into n and since t is equal to 1 this entire term cancels out and the learning rate is going to be 0.01 only now we consider the weight decay because lambda is not equal to zero like as per the logic we don't consider the value of lambda to be zero we consider a non-zero value we initialize it in that way and then we calculate the value of g1 g1 was initially going to be 11 but with this weight decay 
we are going to get the value of g1 as 11.015. We proceed now a step further to calculate the state sum. We initialize s0 to be equal to 0 as per the algorithm. We calculate s1 and then we get the value as this. So we square g1 and add it to s0. We just follow the algorithm and we get this value. And eventually, when we have to update the value of theta, in our case, uh, x1, we move it in this way. We consider the previous value, xt minus 1, which will be x0, uh, minus of gamma cap, which is 0 0.01, uh, we have mentioned over here. And gt is g1, square root of s1 plus epsilon, just exactly the formula which is written over here. We do that. And on doing so, we get the value of x1 as 2.99, which is a little bit lesser than the initial value we started with. So that ends the first iteration. Just for the sake of understanding, we will do one more iteration and try to see what happens at the end of second iteration. For the second iteration, we are going to perform the exact same steps as we did for iteration number one. We calculate the g2. Uh, which is in accordance with this equation um, over here the gradient of fx is coming out to be 2x plus 5 as we have done in the previous iteration we just replace the value of x with 2.99 which is the x1 value from iteration 1 we eventually get the value of g2 we adjust the learning rate over here and over here the change is pretty much evident in the previous step, the value of adjusted learning rate was same as the actual learning rate. But over here, since the uh, value of t is 2, we were able to adjust the learning rate and it is coming out to be 0 0.0099. Uh, this is the learning rate adjustment or the LRDK, learning rate DK, which we have selected. Uh, we do the gradient adjustment as well using the weight DK, just like we did in the previous step. Uh, because lambda was not equal to 0, uh, we considered the value of lambda 0 0.005. We uh, update the state sum as we did previously and we get the updated value of state sum for the second iteration as this. And eventually, when we plug in all the values, we get a result which looks like this. This is exactly what uh, we are supposed to do at the last step. Uh, we just put uh, the value of t as equal to 2 over here so theta 2 becomes x2 this becomes x1 the gamma cap is adjusted this is g2 which we have already done the state sum at time 2 is s2 which we have and epsilon is already fixed on doing so we get the value of x2 as 2.9831 this is a bit small as compared to what we got in the iteration number one ideally we started with 3 then we got 2.99 and now we are getting 2.98 now as we increase the number of iteration, the value of function is going to reduce and so will be the value of x which will reduce along with the function. Now since we have understood uh, the entire Atagrad algorithm as to how it works with the help of just two iterations, the first iteration it reduced to 2.99 and the second iteration it reduced to 2.98, we are going to perform the same Atagrad algorithm and we are going to increase the number of iterations which we can't manually solve on pen and paper on PyTorch and we are going to implement the same algorithm with the same set of initializers as we have done over here for more than 100 iterations and see how exactly the convergence happens. So we try to write the code for the problem which we were trying to solve and I use a Google Colab for this task and let's try to start uh, working on this problem on PyTorch itself. The algorithm which we used in the pen and paper implementation was taken from the documentation only. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to import the torch and then we are going to define the function x. And the function was supposed to be like x square which is like this plus 5 into x minus 8. So I hope this was the function. Yes, this is a function which we are considering. We run it 
and the first step which we are going to do is uh, do the initialization of x so we do it in this way we say that x is a torch dot tensor and be very careful of how we are initializing it it should be a floating point else it is going to throw an error and we should also say that it will be updated with respect to gradient at each step so we say that requires grad is equal to true now one has to be a bit careful about declaring such stuff when we are working with pytorch now say hypothetically if i had to declare this as an integer it will keep throwing an error because only floating point and complex data types can get the gradient this is like uh, the way pytorch is built so always declare it in the form of a floating point so this is what we have done now we are going to declare the other parameters of the algorithm the other parameters were learning rate uh, theta not we have declared uh, theta we have already declared weight decay and uh, learning rate decay so let's start with learning rate which is going to be like 0 0.01 and weight underscore decay it is going to be 0 0.005 and then we have learning rate decay learning rate decay it is going to be uh, let me check the value 0 0.001 yeah and then we have let's say the parameters which we have apart from this epsilon epsilon we consider the same 0 0.401 uh, 0 0.12341 yeah so these are the input parameters which we needed for the task and now we are going to uh, declare the adagrad algorithm so now since we need to declare the adagrad algorithm it's ideally found in torch.optim.adagrad we don't know what the parameters are formally named over there and it's uh, practically uh, very much difficult to memorize everything so the documentation comes in handy and uh, let me align the documentation uh, below this so yeah this is the documentation which it needs for um, so the learning rate is lr lr underscore dk is the learning rate dk and weight underscore dk is the weight dk and eps is the epsilon which we are looking for so these are the parameters which we will be looking and also the set of params like if we understand it carefully these are the set of parameters over which the optimizer will be working on like in previous codes, if you have seen, we usually do model dot parameters as an argument to the optimizer. But here we are uh, trying to, here we will understand what exactly we should be passing over in the optimizer while declaring it. So we initialize the optimizer over here, which is torch dot optim dot add. Uh, Grad. and the first thing which we are going to do is the set of parameters which is x uh, this is what we are going to minimize and the lr is going to be learning underscore rate and then we have the weight decay weight underscore decay which is going to be weight underscore decay only um, and then we have lr underscore dk which is equal to learning underscore rate underscore dk and the value of epsilon is equal to epsilon that's it so we initialize our optimizer over here and it will take some time and yes the optimizer is initialized now we will take uh, the iteration process we will perform the iteration process and we will do it with a high number of iterations so we set the number of iterations over here to be equal to let's say 100 let's say we start with 100 for i in range num underscore iterations the first thing which we should be doing over here is to initialize all the gradients to zero so that's done using optimizer dot zero underscore grad that's it 
So this is the first step we do. The next step is to find the value. Val is just nothing, just f of x. That's it. Then we do val dot backwards and optimizer dot step. The usual meaning of all these things, uh, all these uh, steps have been explained in the last three videos as well. So it should be backward over here. So now we kind of track after every 10 iteration for i mod 10 equal to 0. We keep printing the values. We say that this is the iteration i plus 1 value of f is equal to val dot item and the value of x is x dot item that's it um, if i mod sorry this is not for this is if yeah, this makes sense. Now we run the code and see what we are getting in 10 iterations. Then we will be increasing the number of iterations. We see the uh, value of f keeps on decreasing. Like it started with 16 and then slowly and gradually it keeps on decreasing. And then the value of 2 keeps on, it started with 3 initially. And then after 91 steps, it kept on decreasing till 2.8296. So few things are pretty much consistent like in iteration 1 over here, uh, the value is 2.99, we got the same value as well while we were solving on pen and paper. So this kind of gives a good validation to the fact that our results are quite good. So what we can do, we can increase the number of iteration and run the code again. And whenever we do that uh, thing like this, it's always advisable to run the optimizer as well as uh, other parts in a much better way or from the scratch we say that the value of x is still the same like it's uh, 3 only we consider the uh, parameters which are there um, we initialize the optimizers we say the number of iteration is 1000 and then we observe the values so we are still able to reduce it to 11 and the value of x is 2.52 it's possibly there uh, scope for there is a scope to reduce the value of x to even lesser uh, values and the f could be reduced as well and all this could be done with the help of proper learning rate uh, selection as well as the weight decay which we have considered as well as the initializers which we are uh, selecting over here so let's say we select some uh, value of initial point as 2 and let's see how it performs. Like I change just the initializer and then I run it for 1000 iteration. It gave a better convergence. And also if you see the value of it, after like 991 iterations, it pretty much uh, was a very small value. If I have to apply the quadratic equation to find out the roots of the equation, it was x square plus 5x minus 8. This is the equation. So if I have to apply quadratic uh, function, um, one of the root will be minus of b, b over here is 5. We apply plus now and just import numpy as well, numpy as np, we have np dot sqrt square root, uh, b square will be 25, uh, minus 4 ac will be like 32. Um, because 4 um, a is 1, c is minus 8 um, and on the top of it we are supposed to divide it by 2a which is this. So let's see what value we are getting. It's actually 1.27. So we are getting very close to the actual root which we have and we considered only 1000 iteration. Let's, so we can increase the number of iterations now like we consider the same initializer optimizers are exactly the same we scroll down a bit and increase the number of iterations to 5000 and we keep on printing after let's say 100 
uh, iteration so maybe let, let's say 500 iteration to reduce our goals a bit and then we run it and see what we are getting so we are slowly and gradually going to get some uh, near about values which is 1.27 you can see the value of f is very less like we start with the value of f as 6 which was pretty high and over the period of time uh, as we increase the number of iteration we were able to reduce the value of f and attain the value of x as 6. So till now we are able to solve a very simple problem with the help of adaptive gradient. Um, the problem was to solve a polynomial of degree 2 to find the roots of the polynomial. Ideally we can uh, get the value using quadratic formula only but uh, the main purpose of doing this activity was to acquaint ourselves with different parameters of adaptive gradient descent and see how exactly it works. So we move from simple to complex and since we have got the hold of this algorithm as of now and we know how exactly we need to solve it using PyTorch, we will proceed now to create our own function which will be a bit tough right now and will involve more than one variable. So we create our own function f which consists of two variables and it is of form x cube plus y cube plus cosine of x plus y. We need to find the x and y which minimizes this function. So we need to find the minimum value of f with respect to x and y. Now we can use the usual gradients like we have to calculate the gradient f equate to 0, calculate the Hessian matrix, its eigenvalues and then find out the maxima and minima. But here is where uh, the numerical optimization algorithms come handy. Doing all these steps which we have studied might be a bit tedious at this stage and the calculations involved may be more as we increase the number of variables. So in such cases we take advantage of these numerical optimization methods uh, and for that matter in this video we are talking about Adagrad and try to see how Adagrad is helping us find the least value of this function or near about optimal value of the function which is permissible to be used. We start writing the code for it and it's pretty simple. We are going to import torch and we are going to write the function f. Let me scroll down a bit. Yeah. And let me make it func underscore new. It takes into account two variables x and y and it has to return x to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 3 plus torch dot cos x plus y. So why did we take torch pearl plus torch dot cos over here? It's because of the fact that this function is supposed to take tensors as value. So we are going to take only tensors as value and since the tensors are initialized like torch dot tensors, the function which is going to ingest those tensors should be from torch library only or in other words the output should be in the form of tensors only. That's why we use torch.cos over here. If we use numpy.cos or np.cos over here then it will throw an error because it will tell us that the torch tensors needed to be converted to numpy array first then, in, then only it will be able to compute. Now we initialize uh, as we did previously we say torch.tensor and let's say it's 2.0 and on the top of it the requires underscore grad will be equal to true and we have y as well which we say that it is torch plus tensor and let's say it's both these are random initialization i'm taking requires underscore grad is equal to true yeah we run it so we did the first step of our algorithm and let me bring the algorithm over here first this is the adagrad algorithm we had been following and these are the parameter values which we are taking into account we are going to initialize an optimizer here as well 
so we name it as optimizers and it is in torch dot optim dot grad and over there it will take into account two values x and y and let's say the learning rate i'm just hard coding it 0 0.01 that's it i'm just taking into account one learning rate only i'm not uh, taking any other value which will mean that all the learning rate decay is going to be zero weight decay is zero um, and epsilon is 20 minus 10 or 0 0.9 times 0 and 1 um, it needs to minimize maximize is equal to false will mean that minimize is true and that's it so we run it we declare the optimizer class over here now we start applying this algorithm over iteration we say number of iterations is equal to 100 for starting for i in range num underscore iterations we are exactly going to do what we did previously optimizer dot zero underscore grad and then funk underscore value which is equal to funk underscore new the value of x and y and optimizer dot step or even before that we need to do this funk underscore value dot backward so we clear the gradients we get the functional value we perform the back propagation and we upgrade the weights over here now we print the iteration steps f um, iteration is equal to i plus 1 and value of function is equal to func underscore value dot item and then the value of x is equal to x dot item and corresponding is value of y is equal to y dot item that's it and we are not going to print every time if it is divisible by 10 let me print then only else not and then uh, our code is pretty much ready and now we are going to run it we run it and see that the value of the function is getting reduced slowly and gradually for 100 iteration um, we started at a very high value of x and y the values of x and y reduce the value of function reduced by 91st iteration this is the value of function which we are getting now we will do two things first of all we are going to print the final value only um, final value because we need to know what is the final value func underscore value dot item and x is equal to x dot item and y is equal to y dot item and put f over here why is it showing an error func underscore value yeah so we do it for like thousand iterations and before that we uh, do the initialization again x y initialize to 2 and 4 optimizer being initialized like this and we run it so it ran for multiple iterations the value of function started from 72 and later on it was reduced to 42 and we are kind of uh, getting reduced value of x and y as well so i started with a very high learning rate if we increase the number of iterations or if i increase the learning rate to be let's say 0 0.09 we tune it and we run it obviously you can run for more number of iterations as well so we are going to get better results so if you see the final value is 1.29 which is much close to zero it started with 77 and since uh, we had the leverage to adjust the learning rate it was able to 
get the final value as 1.29 pretty much close to zero and the value of x and y to be like this let's say i increase it the number of iteration to let's say 3000 we do the activity again and see what exactly we are getting with 3000 iterations i think yes it's pretty close to zero final value is slowly and gradually converging to zero only with x and y being 0.55 and 0.63 respectively so if we had to and obviously we can do a better parameter tuning to get more and more results we can play with the other parameters like i just take it, took into account the learning rate i selected with the default one and then i tuned the learning rate a bit um, we can definitely consider other parameters and then try to see whether we are getting the optimal value or not and this is actually pretty easy as compared to solving those equations to get the result let's try to recap what all things we have done till now so we were able to understand the adagrad algorithm and the first step we did was to apply it to a very simple problem in one variable only one unknown variable was there and we were able to apply adagrad algorithm to it then we proceeded further to apply it to a much complex problem involving two variables like x and y two unknown variables were there now we can increase the complexity a bit uh, when we can in include about n unknown uh, variables still it will be able to figure out the optimal value of the function with respect to all the n variables we can do x1 x2 so on till x n now the next step is applying this algorithm over a system of linear equations or in a more concise way ax is equal to beta form where a is a matrix b is a vector x is the vector of unknowns which we needed to estimate and this is exactly how a linear regression or a simple neural network is going to look like let's say we have a matrix a which looks like this which is like 2 3 4 and minus 1 that's it the vector x is consisting of beta 1 beta 2 or to make things a little bit simpler w1 and w2 these are weights and the corresponding value of b is going to be like 8 and 6 let's make it 8 let's make it 6 this is completely random what it means is we have the equation of this form twice of w1 plus thrice of w2 is equal to 8 4 times w1 minus w2 equal to 6 and our uh, action is to find the values of w1 and w2 which satisfies both the equations ideally you can try to map it to a linear regression problem or the way we put an input feature matrix like this matrix a could be considered as an input feature matrix as of now there are only two features and this vector b could be considered as a target matrix uh, we just have two observations uh, for understanding purpose uh, this is one observation this is the second observation first and second observation and this is the corresponding equation for the two observations we need to find the value of w1 and w2 now since uh, we have studied the mean squared error loss function a bit it will be pretty simple that our loss is going to look somewhat like this loss function will be 8 minus twice of w1 minus 3 times w2 square plus 6 minus 4 times w1 plus w2 square this is going to be our loss function which we need to minimize now the complexity has increased a bit till now we were talking about just polynomial where only one observation was unknown or uh, there is just one variable unknown we considered the case where there were two unknown variables ideally this is also the same case just to reiterate the fact that 
we may have a lot of variables or a lot of samples in the data but the loss function is going to be a function with some unknown value or in this case our loss function l is a function which is written as l of w1 comma w2 where both w1 and w2 are unknown and we need to estimate it this is a very small subset of what we actually solve in the usual neural network problems uh, using back propagation only where we have a lot of features we consider only two features over here let's say we have n features like 100 features we are considering we have and there are about 1 lakh observations so we will get a matrix of dimension 1 lakh cross 100 over here and the loss function will be the sum of 1 lakh squared entities and then we have to find the derivative of it now we obviously can't solve this entire thing on pen and paper we probably can't write the entire thing manually and create a loss function like we did previously um, over there we will be needing the help of uh, a model instance that's what we had been doing in first three lectures when we were able to create a model and consider the parameters of it and then look forward to minimize the loss function now we will proceed to solve the same problem which you are seeing right now which involves these two functions first of all in the same way as we have solved the previous two problems uh, in pytorch and later on we are going to scale up with more variables in and solve it in the form of a regression so as of now just to make the understanding clear on how uh, the adagrad is going to work on just two samples and two equations we will proceed to uh, writing the code and try to solve the problem we do the usual import and we do the import torch over here and let's start fresh and initialize the value of x and y x is torch dot tensor and let's make it 1.0 and then the requires underscore grad is true and y is again the same value we initialize the values of x and y over here now we will proceed forward with uh, creating a function which will take into account the system of linear equation it will take the usual x and y uh, so first of all the w1 and w2 are being replaced with x and y just to make the understanding a bit clear and consistent let me make it w1 and w2 only um, so this is w1 this is w2 yeah we say that it is equation is equal to torch dot stack and over here there are two things which are go we are going to put twice of w1 plus three times w2 minus eight which is two into w1 plus three into w2 minus eight comma uh, four times w1 four into w1 minus w2 minus six and eventually we return this equation that's it now we uh, declare the optimizer using torch dot optim dot add a grad and it takes into account both w1 and w2 and we set the learning rate equal to 0 0.01 that's it and we set the number of iterations to be equal to thousand first let's start with thousand only for i in range uh, num in the pro iterations and first we do is optimizer dot zero underscore grad and then so it will clear the previous gradient and then we get the equations as func w1 comma w2 and if you see the loss function which we defined over here sum of squared error loss function so um, 
it's equal to 8 minus 2w1 minus 3w2 square plus the 6 minus 4w1 plus w2 square. So in order to accommodate that, we are just going to use torch dot sum and this is going to be the loss function and then we use equation uh, raised to the power 2 and this is the loss value which we are having now after that we do loss value dot backward and eventually we are going to do optimizer dot step and now we print the value that subsequent step we print the loss value as loss underscore value dot item and the value of w1 as w1 dot item and w2 as w2 dot item that's it and we print it after every 100 steps oh yeah iteration number also needs to be there i plus 1 that's it so exactly the same code as we did previously just that the loss function needs to be explicitly called out over here we clear out the gradients to zero at line number three we get the equation values we calculate the loss which is the sum of uh, squared error loss and we do the backward propagation and we do the optimizer step uh, to update the gradients and then eventually we keep on printing it so let's see how exactly we are getting the value we run it we see that the loss started at we started at a very high loss 18 then it went to 10 8 6 5 4 3 and slowly gradually the losses may have decreased a bit i think yeah it decreased to 2 uh, just to see what is the eventual uh, value of the loss we just say loss underscore value dot item and we run it the eventual value of loss was around 2.31 which was pretty less as compared to what we started from so we were able to get the uh, solution to the system of linear equations over here using adagrad just that there is uh, one caveat that we have not done any parameter tuning of that sort over here uh, with more parameter tuning we can get good results and also we selected uh, initial starting point as one so initializers as well as the parameters they play a very important role in getting the results and uh, getting the optimal values as well so we were able to understand that we are able to scale up the problem to a system of linear equations which is pretty much close to how uh, the neural networks are supposed to work now we are going to use the same logic to solve uh, the problem of linear regression or a regression problem which we had solved previously uh, in one of the videos with the adagrad and see how exactly we are going, going to get the results now to see how exactly this adagrad algorithm works on um, a neural network problem as we had been discussing since past four classes we uh, create a regression data set as we had done previously but over here we increase the number of features to 1500 because we want to test the utility of adagrad algorithm on the sparse uh, data which we will be having so we increase the number of features over here we run the code and it's exactly the same code which we had been uh, using in last two or three videos uh, we run this code again the only difference which we will be seeing over here is the fact that we considered the optimizer as adagrad over here the learning rate and learning rate decay are being mentioned over here we run it and we just run it for 10 epochs not more than that we see the loss is still high um, in case of adagrad 
uh, after 10 iterations we tend to see that the loss is decreasing slowly and gradually now we need to benchmark it against the uh, usual optimizers which we had been using previously now we have mentioned in this video that adagrad works quite reasonably well when we have uneven gradients present in the data we had like 1500 features over here present uh, just to give the context of how big the data was over here there were just two features w1 and w2 and there were just two observations this and this um, but over here we have around 10,000 observations and 1500 features so we are effectively solving a system of linear equations where there are 10,000 linear equations and 1500 unknown variables are there and we use the adagrad algorithm over here we get some loss uh, reduction in both train and validation now we benchmark it against the stochastic gradient descent which we had been using previously so we just use sgd and we just put the learning rate as 0 point let's say 0 01 um, and then try to run it mm, we are getting value as nan this usually happens when uh, the learning rate is too high exploding and vanishing gradient a concept which I will explain a bit later but to put things in perspective we reduce the learning rate a bit over here and try to see what we are getting yeah we are not able to get to convergence at all over here so we can keep tuning the learning rates and we can keep experimenting with different optimizers as of now we just uh, understood only one optimizer in this entire video which is Adagrad so depending upon the problem which you might be solving, uh, some typical optimizers might suit your purpose. Um, in many cases, a stochastic gradient descent may, might out outperform an Adagrad algorithm or there are other optimizers like Adam or Adam W, weighted Adam as they say. Uh, these algorithms can work reasonably well as compared to Adagrad or even stochastic gradient descent. In some cases, when you see that uh, the optimizers like Adam and stochastic gradient are pretty slow. You might revert back to Adagrad in order to get better and quick results. So it will all depend on the type of optimization algorithm you are using and the type of problem you are solving. So uh, depending on what all we have discussed till now, we will give a quick review of what we have studied. We started with the understanding of the Adagrad algorithm uh, from the documentation as to how it is working. We started with a very simplistic example with just one variable and tried to uh, uh, implement the Adagrad algorithm and get a little bit of hold over how the algorithm works numerically. And once it was done, we were able to write it in the form of code for more iterations. Uh, pen on paper, two iterations were done we were able to scale it up to 100 200 iterations or more then we proceeded with solving uh, the equation in more than one variables and then we were able to bridge the gap between the understanding of adagrad algorithm as well as its implementation in uh, the terms of neural network models which we are implementing on daily basis and we implemented this algorithm and these are the results which we have got we got an adagrad algorithm implemented and kind of benchmarked with the same learning rate for stochastic gradient descent uh, with sparse features uh, we were getting better results in adagrad but definitely with better parameter tuning for both the optimization algorithms because this is just a bit of rough work sort of activity which i have done over here but when you do proper parameter tuning of both the algorithms, you will be getting the best uh, performing optimizer uh, algorithm as well. Since we have discussed exhaustively how a numerical optimization works, taking into account of a simple Adagrad algorithm, uh, the coming videos are going to be much easy to follow and I urge you all to prepare notes while following the video so that it becomes quite easy to follow the video and keep a track of different notations and updation rules which are happening throughout the video so see you in the next video thanks for your time